Yes, lads, welcome back to another custom tactics video on the channel. Today we are taking a look at the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. Let's get into it. Does your team look like this? Do you struggle to complete those game-changing SBCs and play with the best players in FIFA 23? If you said yes to any of this, then you need to get over to AOA and secure yourself some cheap and reliable foot coins and use code ALP at checkout for an extra 3% off. Jeez. Yes, lads, diving in with a defensive style. We leave it on balance. I've tried pressing. It is pretty good. It defends in a 4-4-2 as well, so we'll get into that in a little bit, but we leave it on balance for the most part just because your, bat your stamina gets smoked if you don't, and your players seem to just be away from where you want them on the pitch when you're defending for the most part. The width, we were knocked down to 40. I have tried 35. We weren't a massive fan. It just seemed a bit too tight. But 40 is amazing. The depth, I'm all the way up to 70 on this formation. It is amazing with 70. However, if you are struggling defensively, I recommend you go 65, 60, even 55. Just depends how comfortable you are with the area of the pitch you want to press. I like to win a ball back much higher. And I've got the defenders that allows me to press really high as well. So it's important to understand how well formatted your team is for the meta. Build a play, balance and direct passing. I don't really recommend going for anything else. I've had a few questions in the comments about things like long ball and, um, you know, long ball, um, fast build up and things like that. But to be honest, I just leave it on balance. It gives you the best of both worlds. And yeah, it's amazing. And then direct passing, nothing comes close. So definitely lob that on. The width. We do play 50, as we do with most of our formations. The, the, the formation itself um, is nice going forward. We do create some extra width with one of the fullbacks, which is important. Players in the box, six. A lot of my formations have six. It helps that one central midfielder that we are going to send forward, get involved with the play, which is important. Corners, we are one. And free kicks, we whack on one also. This just means we're not getting caught on the counter-attacks. And, it, you know, there's nothing more annoying this year. I hate being caught on the counter-attacks, especially if you got, like, something that should benefit you, like a corner or a free kick. The last thing you want is to concede to go off the back of that. So one and one for that. And you have control over your players anyways. Most people pass it short, so there's no point in over-committing. Instructions, the most important part of this formation. Before we get into it, though, if you haven't already, leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It really does help the channel grow. And with this video today, we're not going to be doing gameplay for a change. I am going to jump straight into my rank one rewards from the Community Tots Weekend League. So I hope you enjoy that. And leave it in the comments if you'd like to see more of the rank one rewards as they come in. They, they are on the shorts feed, but if you want to incorporate it in the videos, let me know. But anyways, enough waffle. Let's dive into the custom tactics. Both strikers are stay central again and behind. Bread and butter is amazing on your strikers. Alawire and Mbappe are probably the two best forwards in the game at it, other than like your R9s and things like that. But you know what? I mean, 99 pace and pretty much Mbappe feels like 99 pace, so can't go wrong. Cam, it's important that you have come back on defense because it's going to make up part of your four-man midfield when you're defending. Um, so he's going to fall apart of your 4 4 2 where he goes depends on how we set up the midfield, uh, the midfield three. So we'll get into that now. Then get into the box crosses. It just means he's in the he's in the box. You have got more passion options when your midfielders are moving up the pitch. When your fullbacks moving up the pitch, he's going to be an option usually on the 18. Um, and Mbappe and Alawiren tend to be a bit further forward, but he will be an additional option in the box, which is going to give you a lot more opportunities to score. More bodies in the box, more opportunities to score. So. Getting into the midfield, when we're defending, we have two players stay central. So they're going to go almost in front of Sergio Ramos and Lucio. This is Jude Bellingham and Vieira. Normally, I would have um, him on balance, but I like to have, in this formation, I don't know why, I prefer to have two, um, two players on stay back while attacking. It just feels a bit more secure. Um, but stay back while attacking, cover center. Stay back while attacking and cover center on Vieira and um, Bellingham, important. I like to have um, uh, Bellingham on the right-hand side as well, so you can do those Travellas to the far corner. That'll point it if uh, if you didn't do the Travellas. Um, 
And then Zidane is get into box for crosses. Important because he's going to increase your odds of scoring because he's going to be getting in there. He's going to be creating options. And he's also going to be a creative man in your attack. So he's going to be able to feed your fullback that goes forward. He's going to be firing balls into Alawire and Mbappe Rooney. It's important. Um, and then cover wing. So as you can see, the formation is taking shape. Zidane will be, when defending, will be in front of Roberto Carlos. Vieira and Bellingham will move centre in front of Sergio Ramos and Lucio. And then Wayne Rooney come back on defence, as you would have seen earlier on. He naturally slots in at right mid in front of Munia. So 4-4-2. Again, Rooney's going to pick the ball up in a position where he's able to get a Traveller off if, if it's on. But for the most part, if you're taking the ball with Vieira, Rooney's going to make his way back into this camp position. And the formation will then spring back into shape into this 4-1-2-1-2, which is sick. Uh, but it's important to have, if you have your right mid go wide, or cover wing even, your left mid is then cover center stay back while attacking so you can flip this around and then so if you flipped it around Rooney would then naturally come back on the left hand side but it doesn't really make sense to do it that way because the Travellers are so OP you want Bellingham on this side and you want Rooney moving into right mid where he can dri drive those passes through Lucio and Ramos you touch them I'll come for you I swear I will I've told you a thousand times do not change them you will be punished by me and EA for that Good thing EA does punish you for making silly decisions. Sometimes they punish you for no reason. Um, goalkeeper is comes for crosses and sweeper keeper. Very important. Well, not very important. It'll help you out now and again. Um, probably save you once or twice a weekend league. Definitely worth putting on nonetheless. Four backs. I have one four back on stay back while attacking and overlap. Overlap just in case I want to toggle it to go forward. Up, then left, and up, then right to hug the touchline. It will increase the width. I do recommend doing just up and right just to hug the touchline anyway. It is in good, it's going to increase the, how much you stretch your opposition. And then Roberto Carlos, I'd probably say he's my best attacking fullback. It doesn't matter which fullback you use, just use your most attacking one to go forward. He's on balance and overlap. Don't put just uh, join the attack because he might not come back. I've not tried it. It's not worth it. Yeah. On balance, they get forward enough anyways. You get forward, he gets back, and it really does help stretch the play down that left-hand side. But that is the 4-1-2-1-2. Two, two. Leave in the comments if you do enjoy. Um, we will be right back with our Rank 1 rewards right after this. Yes, lads. Rank 1 rewards secured. The weekend was pretty straightforward. We didn't really get too many games where we thought it was a... We were going to lose. We had one where we just kept on in the bar, and that's the one we did last from 19 and 1. Rank 1. We're going to see what we get in these player picks. 684 plus and 85 plus player picks. Let's get into it. All one of four from rank 1. Let's go. We get an 88 team of the season in the first one, which is good. One of four again. Just give me a big. Oh, two in there. We get uh, Gertrude, which is sick. 91. He looks fairly sick. I want to see Xavi Simmons, ideally. There's another one in there as well. David De Gea, decent pull that. Um, so we've had all team of the season so far. One, another last one of four. We get an 87. That's not bad. That's from rank one. Another 285 plus one of threes. We get an 86 in the first one, which is very bad. And the last one we get an 88 to Stegen, which isn't bad for us. So great fodder there. One of five community team of the season player picks from rank one. Let's go. Leave in the comments who you get from these picks. We get one of five. These are we get De Gea in the first one. Not the best. The second one we get. Come on. Give me a big one. Give me a big boy. Danilo. That's very bad so far. And finally, the last player pick. Just give me a dub, please. My God, they were awful. <laughs> Community team of the season, three player pack. What do we get? Leave in the comments what you got if you did get this pack. We get Brazil, center back. It's never going to be anyone sick, is it? I thought it was going to be someone sick for a second. Oh, the Ram. Damn, that'll do. Lovely. Cheese.